Hi there and welcome to the next in our series of fireside chats and I'm delighted to be joined today by Father Sati Anthony, the Rector of Moe Nubra in the western region of our diocese and the preacher at our Eucharist this morning and the recorded service for this Sunday, the Great Feast of Christ the King. Sati, thank you for your ministry to us today. And um, Sadi, I loved uh, I loved that description of the preacher as, as one who whose calling is to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. And I thought you did that beautifully today. You you modelled that for us. And I guess uh, you know in the year that we've we've had this year, as we've been reflecting at synod, and indeed the the news we've had overnight today, and our hearts go out to again to the family of, of Brenda, Bernie and and her people at Bansdale. Uh, there's plenty of affliction for which we seek comfort and I think you know that's hopefully a ministry that our parishes and our ministry centres have, have had this year in, in reaching out to those most affected by the events of this year, bushfires and pandemic and, and other tragedies and to offer that pastoral support and comfort and I think that's something we can um, take up your invitation to be you know quietly <laughs> proud of um, in, our, in our ministry but perhaps we're not quite so good at the more prophetic uh, stuff the stuff that Jesus did as you reminded us this morning the affliction of the of the comfortable and I wonder if picking up some of your points in your homily would you agree that one of the areas we need a little bit more affliction, perhaps, where we're too comfortable in the church is around this over-identification of the church with the kingdom of God? And we tend to think of, oh, you, you, you can only come into the, the kingdom, you know, somehow, you know, through the church, which is not what Jesus is saying at all in that parable of the, the sheep and the goats. Yes, uh, I think we're treading on dangerous grounds here in terms of <laughs> uh, church's ex ecclesiology and mm -hmm. uh, its place in the world. The way I defend is by assuming, not assuming, knowing that Jesus was not a Christian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And his primary audience was to rejuvenate the Jews from, mm -hmm. from within their Judaism. Yes. And Christian was a, Christianity was an offshoot, a uh, sub branch, uh, or maybe yeah. uh, a subversion from traditional Judaism. But Absolutely. at that point in time, I think Jesus wanted to really dip into the deeper resources of Judaism yes. and um, bring it out to remind them yes. the way he did it. Yes, yes. In that as, sense. as you say, he was an interpreter of scripture um, in his time and place, but of course the scriptures that he was interpreting were, were the Jewish scriptures, the Hebrew right. Bible, the Torah, yes, yes. the prophets, the writings. Um, and it's easy for us to forget that and assume that Jesus was a good Anglican. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I, I, I thought you, 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 you teased that out for us very, very helpfully and, and yeah, really did did just kind of you know push us to rethink our ecclesiology a little bit uh, in in the light of that that parable, and I loved your description of the the borderless kingdom, that peaceable kingdom, which is a kingdom of of the heart, and which you won't find on a map, um, and you don't need a, a visa or a passport Sorry. to get yes. into, and and you've been. You've been really constructively vocal uh, in the Gippsland Anglican and other places about your your sense and your frustration with the kind of persistent, sort of entrenched, uh, almost unconscious racism that can still exist in our culture, and you know from which the church is not exempt. That just our, our mindset sometimes is not sufficiently inclusive or expansive and you, and you really brought out the radical inclusion of, of that kingdom of the heart this morning. Tell us a little bit more about, about your experience of that 
in Australia and, and indeed in the church? And I know this is a challenging topic. Yeah, I've been giving some thought to the statements which I have made here yeah. uh, in Australia. And there are moments I get this perception that maybe it's my assumption uh, that there's racism. Mm. I may be wrong and I admit that, but also maybe in a dominant white Anglo-Saxon community, mm. racism I believe doesn't challenge anyone unless mm. someone like me mm. enters the space. Mm. So the one who questions about racism will be me, yeah. not anyone else, and yeah. that may be my own um, assumptions and um, negative way of assuming my connections and relationship. The people may not be racists, mm. but maybe I'm digging my grave here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's your experience, Sati, and I think you know we 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 need to we need to hear that that story and and. You know, to learn from that experience, I think, so that you know what might be for us something that's 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 implicit can become more explicit. We can be more more conscious and more intentional, I guess, about even just our, our, our use of language and things like that. Um, you know, because I I've really appreciated the way you've been able to just yeah gently call us to account. I think in a few of the things you've said and, and written in you know in recent times. Maybe I'm speaking for, for, for other, you know, in the wider community, you have people or, or individuals or communities who may feel on the, on the fringe of acceptance. Yes. But me personally, my journey in Australia, I've been always been accepted, I've been yeah. tested yeah. initially, um, serving in an, in an Australian church. Is he okay? Can he do the liturgy? Yes. Can he do Lima? Yes. Uh, can he do a Barbie? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think I've gone through those tests yes. and been accepted. Yeah, yeah. Quite well throughout my ministry in sure. Australia. And in a sense, you've been given a place in the community by virtue of your role as, yes. a, as a parish priest. And even even so, it's it's you know it's hard to to think that you had to kind of go through those hoops to prove yourself in ways that that others may not have been expected to. Yeah. And. Um, and I, I, a sort of a example I bring from Sri Lanka, yeah. where we were brought up to a degree in an anglicized school and church and yeah. community during my younger days, where my inclinations towards music turned to pop. Yeah. And it so happens that people started describing some of us as coconuts. Because they are white inside and brown outside, <laughs> and that's perfectly fine. That's who we were, and and to come here, I think that's an advantage to be mm. uh, a white inside. Yeah. And no, we wanted to come here, and we dealt with the people. And uh, I personally don't feel it. Mm. I just wonder the, whether the word racism is sort of uh, lopsided in these discussions. Yeah. 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 And people on one side, and here too I'm treading on dangerous grounds, people on one side of the, uh, the divide, mm. I don't know whether they are less appreciative of what's being offered to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe it's the media beating it up unnecessarily. Yeah. And maybe like what I intended in the sermon. Yes. That's not in our self-appreciation of ourselves. And maybe that self-appreciation denied in the public. Yes. By the media. Yes. Yes, indeed. No, I think sometimes we need to walk those, those, those fine lines, don't we? And those, those, be prepared to have those difficult conversations, you know, in charity um, and to name the hard things and to ask the hard questions. So good on you for doing that for us and with us and, and keep, keep, you know, holding us to account on, on that front and other, other fronts in that prophetic tradition that you, that you, you know, touched on. Again, so helpfully in your in your sermon today, Sati. You, you in the course of that, you told a lovely story about your you know a, an incident in your ministry in Sri Lanka. Tell us a bit more about your experience of the church in Sri Lanka, and, and what was it that, that brought you to Australia out of that experience? 
I've been there only for seven or eight years as an ordinary minister. Mm -hmm. That's not my life is here yeah. for nearly 30 years. The challenges for the church there are multifaceted. Mm -hmm. You live among people of other faiths who share the same God. Yes. And the same universe, but have different interpretations to it. Yeah. And then the awakening among the church is to recognize that we are not alone, mm -hmm. but we are different mm -hmm. in understanding the meaning of life. And also to combat the a, cer a certain view of the church which we have learned uh, or been taught to us that we are better than the others yes. and to go on telling them we are not better, we are different. Yes. Yes. A different way of looking at uh, the divine and, and the meaning of life. Yes. And and that's a challenge. Yes. And to coexist with people of other faiths and as I try to imply the message mm. to live with mutual respect. Yeah. For for my ordination I had Buddhist clergy. Yeah, yeah wonderful. Uh, on, on the front street. And yeah. They, and they saw us washing me washing the feet of the bishop. The bishop washing the feet of my feet and so yeah. on and so forth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That one of the first occasions where feet washing was offered in, in, in an ordination. How marvellous. I think we should reintroduce that. <laughs> I have to get the uh, liturgical commission onto it, the, the group that you referenced today. <laughs> it's, uh, it's such a lovely symbol, isn't it? So, and it? It's quite poignant for us back in Sri Lanka because it being a majority Buddhist country, it's the people who wash the Buddhist priests' feet yes. when they visit their homes yes. sometimes. Yes. But the priest washing the people, it's like Jesus. There it is in, in our gospel, so, isn't it? So. It's, yeah, that's right. So, so kind of resonant and evocative of, of that, that wonderful story. Yeah. And, and so what was it that, that kind of, you sense a, a vocation to, to come and minister in, in this context in Australia? I was planning to leave the country anyway. Yeah. Uh, at a certain of, and go to an English speaking world. Yeah. Uh, in the sense, um, ma mainly because of the problems we're facing there with, between, between races. Yeah. And when there's a racial tension, when you belong to a certain race, they don't mm -hmm. distinguish between I mean, uh, whether you are a Christian or a non Christian. Yes. So don't you belong to this race? Yes. And it so happened that I looked at the future and said, do we have a future here? And some decided to stay, many decided to leave. And I uh, spoke to the bishop and the bishop said, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Australia was a place uh, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. to apply uh, like anyone else. Yes, yes. And then I was unemployed for a few months until I got a break in, in Darwin. Yeah, wow. Started my ministry. I continued my ministry, I commenced it here. Yeah, fantastic. And what were your impressions coming coming out of the Sri Lankan context and that that kind of more multi-faith, uh, interracial kind of environment to to a country like Australia and, and ministering in, in our setting here? What were your what were your initial impressions? I don't know, Darwin's very different to Melbourne, but <laughs> My very first impression was the change in the language of the prayer book. We were used to 1662 English. Ah, yeah, right. yeah. And then I went to the church and said, this is baby English. <laughs> it lacks some dignity and depth. And the gravitas, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, uh, but then I sort of, okay, we went beyond that. Um, I mean, so it's a difficult, different challenges. Yeah? I just, I had to find my feet to start. Yes. To root ourselves. Yes. And we are still pilgrims uh, from going from state to state and enjoying the various uh, or committing ourselves to, to, to the church's mission as a, yeah. uh, in, in every state and in every parish and sticking to the basics. Yeah. But while sticking to the basics, also introducing the people to the other faith aspect of living, yes. which is not a, 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 a uh, an experience here in a predominantly white Anglo Saxon mm -hmm. community. But then I just want to tell them the world is bigger. Yeah. And uh, the scriptures, and I remember sharing some time ago back in Perth, 
and I was called a racist because of that. Mm. And I told them Jesus was not a pawn. <laughs> yeah. Part of the language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Bible, the spirit, the spiritual spirituality of the Bible is not in nothing to do with the land uh, of, of, of England. Yeah. And yeah. just notwithstanding some of our hymnody. <laughs> <laughs> And so what did Jesus mean? What did the scriptures mean from a non-Western, non-European yes. context? Yes. And to unearth that, yes. um, for instance, I said, washing the feet, when we do it on, on Monday, Thursday, yes. you read once a year because it's in the Bible. But I said, back in Sri Lanka, it's done quite often of course. among the Buddhist clergy. And, yeah. and even sometimes, even in the villages, when we go into the house, Wash our feet and walk in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The sign of hospitality and yes, yeah, and welcome. Yeah. So I, yeah, I took that as in a very conscious, uh, focused role to inform the, the Christians here. Yeah. That in the name of spirituality, there's a type of ignorance which you are. Yes. Engrossed. Yes. In. Yes. Yes. A, a, a bubble sometimes, yeah. Yes, and I just sort of uh, to, to look upon myself to wherever I go, just yeah. to drop the little pebbles <laughs> to, to, to disturb me. <laughs> to afflict the comfortable as well as comforting <laughs> the afflicted. Uh, that's good. And you mentioned you had some, some time in, in, in Perth where you got the particular affliction of becoming a West Coast Eagle supporter, I seem yes. to recall, and then you and I first met um, working in the same deanery in, in Melbourne Diocese, and then it was lovely to come to Gippsland and find you already here uh, in your in your current role, which is which is fantastic. And so I think it was earlier this year. Gosh, there's so much has happened this year that I was privileged to come and help you open the listening post um, in the parish of Moe, Newborough, which is a wonderful uh, initiative, uh, a wonderful point of outreach for the parish. I think into the into the community, and there there was a some support I think from a an Anglicare Parish Partnerships Grant, and tell us a little bit about um, about the vision of the Listening Post and what its ministry is. It started at, at a discussion regarding domestic violence, and uh, the suggestion was, what do we offer towards domestic violence uh, yeah. and the people who are hurting yeah. as a church, as a parish? And what emerged there was, okay, there are so many workshops and seminars, and if you offer workshops and seminars, they'll say, oh, not again. Mm. And someone said, why don't we just listen to them? Mm. Not provide advice, and we can always direct them to others, but just listen to them. Mm. And that's where it all began. Mm. Mm. People want to be listened. Mm. They've been told what to do. They've been advised what to do. Mm. But somebody just to sit back and listen to their story. Mm. And so you have a, you've created a space where that can happen? We are creating a space. Yeah. Uh, the building and volunteers, again, the training on listening skills. Yeah. And then COVID. Yeah, yeah. Yes, of course. Yeah. But it's a wonderful example, I think, of how we can be present in the communities in which we're set. Um, it, it's kind of a, an enactment of the parable you know, when I had a story I needed to tell, you listened <laughs> or, or not. And um, of course we, we do it for Jesus and uh, for the least of his, of his brothers and sisters, but we are also mindful of those people in our community who, do, who just do it, as you said so eloquently uh, this morning. That's right. Yeah. Uh, for us to recognise there are people just doing it, just listening. Yeah. And for us as a church to acknowledge them and appreciate them. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I, I hope that when that resumes, it's it's kind of more embodied ministry. That it's a great uh, asset to the to the outreach of the of the parish society and a, and a great blessing to the community, as I'm I'm sure it will be. And it was lovely to see the the uh, the kind of enthusiasm around it at that function and the involvement of local council and, and other other representatives from from the area and it's a great example again of the, the sort of thing I think we can we can replicate uh, you know in yes. parts of the, the diocese and the wider church and of course our, our friends at Anglicare always keen to, to help us you know with those kinds of projects so uh, 
yeah, I, I commend it to, to anyone who happens to get a chance to to, to drop in and, and see it in action and um, and uh, yeah, have be listened to <laughs> instead of spoken action, at. <laughs> the action they might see if they talk and we listen. That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, Sati, it was an absolute pleasure to listen to you today in your Thank in your you. homily and church. Thank you again for your ministry to us and every blessing as you uh, lead your people uh, back into uh, COVID normal and some form of gathered gathered worship as the restrictions we hope continue to ease and we move into to Advent and, and, and the great days ahead and um, every every blessing on your ministry amongst us Sati and thanks Thank again you. for your time today. Thank you. Thanks everyone. We we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Mm-hmm.